Now we must deal with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. The Jehovah's Witnesses hang on to this vigorously. Verse 42. The resurrection of the dead is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power, it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, there is a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, from heaven. All right, now let's follow the context, let's follow the language very carefully. The key to it is the phrase, spiritual body. 44. What is a spiritual body? Nobody in this room knows because nobody in this room has ever seen one. Nobody in the world today knows because nobody in the world has ever seen one. The only people that know what a spiritual body is like are the people that saw Jesus Christ after His resurrection. Because He is the only person in possession of a spiritual body. Therefore, by definition, a spiritual body can be arrived at only in its basic nature by an evaluation of the body of Jesus of Nazareth after His resurrection. What kind of body did Jesus have? We have found in Luke chapter 24 that he said, Handle me and see. A spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see me have. Therefore, a spiritual body is a physical form. It has flesh and it has bone. It does not have blood. And we know that because blood in the Old Testament and New Testament is the symbol of corruption. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And as one grows older, the blood, from studies of hematology, begins to disintegrate. And as you grow older, now geriatric scientists are convinced aging is a disease that is directly related to the chemistry of blood. Of course, that was well known to the Apostle Paul, though he was not a doctor, simply because the Holy Spirit informed him of it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he told us all about it. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. Why is it sown in corruption? Because it's a body that depends upon blood. And when the blood no longer serves the carcass, the carcass dies. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it disintegrates. It's sown in weakness, it's raised in power. It's sown a natural body. It's raised a spiritual body. It's sown a body that is dependent upon physiochemical relationships of earth. It is raised a body dependent upon spiritual relationships to heaven. No longer dependent upon anything on earth. But yet, Exalted, glorified, immortalized. Truly flesh, truly bone. But flesh and bone such as this dimension has never seen before. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. First John 3. But we know that when He appears we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. How is He? In a spiritual body. It does not say a spirit. It says a spiritual body, and the word is soma, form. The same word that's found in John chapter 2, verse 21. Body, soma, form. That's what Jesus has. That's the kind of form we're going to have. Jesus could eat broiled fish in a honeycomb. Luke 24. At the same time, He could appear in a room with the doors all closed and the windows. Ah, said the Jehovah's Witness, that proves it. He came through the doors 
or through the ceiling and the floors. Doesn't say that. We pointed out last week, it nowhere ever states that. It simply says, Jesus appeared. And we showed that in dimensional relationships between earth and heaven, it's not necessary to pass through anything to get anywhere. You simply move from one dimension to the next. And your body is not restricted if you have a body such as Jesus Christ had. Now, if you and I try it, it's not going to work out. But he could do it because he alone possessed an immortal body. If you want to define a spiritual body, I suppose you could say from the biblical evidence, it is a physical or bodily form possessed of spiritual characteristics. The capacity to move from dimension to dimension. The capacity to appear or disappear at will. Yet, pointedly, it is declared... It is not, repeat, not a spirit. Because a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone. And Jesus had that. 1 Corinthians 15 never says Jesus was a spirit. 1 Corinthians 15 says He possessed a spiritual body. You define a spiritual body in the context of Luke 24, John chapter 2 verse 21, and John chapter 20. Always it is the form of Jesus, the physical form, which is spoken of. That is a spiritual body. Notice it says in verse 50, I say to you, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why can't flesh and blood inherit the kingdom of God? Second clause. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. What are flesh and blood the symbol of? Corruption. Corruption. And as flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither can corruption inherit incorruption. One represents the other. The Jehovah's Witness is far from proving from 1 Corinthians 15 that Jesus is the Spirit. Confirm only one thing. That He was raised in a spiritual body and we define a spiritual body by Christ's own words. Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your heart? Handle me and see. A spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see me have. It is argued that Jesus manufactured bodies to convince his disciples. Answer? Produced a single verse which says it's true. Produced a single verse that gives any shred of evidence to support it. Doesn't exist. It is a gratuitous assumption made by the watchtower to explain the appearances of Jesus because they reject His holy resurrection. And the only way out is to have Him as a quick change artist who went around manufacturing forms. And they usually sidetrack you by saying, you remember how the angels took on human form? The Christian says, oh yeah, that's right. Well, that's what Jesus did. That is known in logic as a classic non sequitur, which means it doesn't follow no how, baby. <laughs> Or in a more scholarly vein, there is no possible connection between the two at all. The angels may have appeared to look like men, but they were not men. That's a very important point. They may look like it, but they're not. Jesus just didn't look like Jesus. The text says Jesus was Jesus. And to make sure they didn't forget it, he told them so and then had lunch with them to demonstrate that he was for real. That's good empirical evidence.